हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर विश्वनाथ तिवारी फ्रॉम सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ राजस्थान टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट मैकेनिज्म एंड काइनेटिक्स ऑफ कंपिटिटिव इनहिबिशन दिस मॉड्यूल हैज बीन टेकन फ्रॉम पेपर मॉलिकुलर एंजाइमोलॉजी एंड प्रोटीन इंजीनियरिंग सो ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज टू अंडरस्टैंड the mechanism behind the competitive inhibition as well as the kinetics of competitive inhibition we will also discuss what is the role of dissociation constant of the inhibitor in the drug designing so this module will start with the discussion of basic of competitive inhibition then we will discuss what is the mechanism of competitive inhibition then we will discuss what is kinetic of enzyme inhibition then we will discuss how we can calculate the dissociation constant of a competitive inhibitor then we will elaborately discuss what are the different examples that is playing role to understand competitive inhib inhibition or their design based on competitive inhibition in the end we will discuss how the study of competitive inhibition helps in the drug designing so you know that rate of enzyme converting a particular reaction into the reactant into the product is influenced by presence of many other factor one of them is enzyme inhibitor so enzyme inhibitor are the molecules that inhibits the catalytic process of enzymatic reaction so and inhibition of enzyme could be significant when we are talking about inhibiting a crucial enzymatic pathway so enzyme inhibitors are following different mechanism the first one is irreversible inhibition second is suicide inhibition then feedback inhibition then reversible inhibition so in this module we are discussing about reversible inhibition so who decides reversible inhibition irreversible inhibition so reversible inhibition mainly involves weak non covalent interaction between enzymes and inhibit inhibitors there are strong covalent interaction that also plays role in enzyme inhibition but that is not the part of reversible inhibition so if the covalent bond is involved in the inhibition they are mainly involved in suicide inhibition and irreversible inhibition so non covalent interaction are playing a significant role in the study of reversible inhibition as well as the different types of reversible inhibition so what are the different types of non covalent interaction that are involved when we are talking about enzyme and reversible inhibitor interaction you know that they might be hydrogen bonding they might be hydrophobic interaction they might be van der waal forces there may be salt bridges although they are very weak forces but if they act together they are strong interactions because of non covalent interaction involves reversible inhibitor are easily separated from the enzyme because they are easily detached from the enzyme therefore on the basis of concentration of enzyme substrate on the inhibitor as well as the inhibitor concentration the reversible inhibition can be classified or divide into competitive inhibition non competitive inhibition uncompetitive inhibition and mixed inhibition so present module will be discuss elaborately about competitive inhibition its kinetics its examples and its role in the development of drugs mechanism of competitive inhibitors competitive inhibitor as the name suggests there is a competition so a competitive inhibitor have structural similarity with the substrate that's why we have the competition so competitive inhibitor 
is a structurally similar to the substrate. Therefore, they will interfere in the binding of substrate with the active site. It is well known that the active site from will only bind to the substrate. Therefore, two molecules cannot allow to bind to the same site. Therefore, there is a competition. Either we will have binding of the substrate to the active site or binding of inhibitor to the active site, which is competitive in nature. In this figure, you can see that once the substrate will be there in the active site, inhibitor cannot bind. While if inhibitor is there, substrate cannot bind. The binding affinity of the competitive inhibitor and substrate is the deciding factor for the selection of candidate for binding to the active site. For example, if inhibitor have better in binding affinity, it will bind. If substrate have better affinity, it will bind. Therefore, at a given time, free enzyme either exist in the form of ES complex when substrate binding take place or EI complex when inhibitor binding take place. But we will not have any ESI complex that is formed when we are talking about competitive inhibition. There is a competition between substrate and competitive inhibitor. So, therefore, they are mutually exclusive. That means if one bind that exclude other one, the competitive inhibitor, if it is non-metabolized, then it will inhibit the reaction. But if it is metabolized, then it may be converted into product. But most of the time, that competitive inhibitor are not metabolized. At any substrate concentration, inhibitor concentration is mutually exclusive. Therefore, if you increase the substrate concentration, then you can reverse the competitive inhibition because it's the quantity of substrate enhancement leads to the removal of inhibitor in the competition. So, the substrate wins and it will bind to the active site. Competitive inhibitor will bind with the free enzyme and inhibit the binding of substrate to the active site. So, if you see kinetics of competitive in inhibition, then you will find that there is a competition between substrate and competitive inhibitor for binding to the active site. So, if the competitive inhibitor will bind to the enzyme before substrate, then substrate will not bind to the enzyme, so no product formation take place. But if competitive inhibitor doesn't bind before substrate, then it cannot bind to the enzyme. But if it bind before the substrate, then it will alter the binding of substrate. Therefore, you can say that they will alter the chem of the enzyme. But competitive inhibitor does not alter the product formation of the ES complex because if substrate binds to the active site, then ES complex is formed. So, ES complex is going to form product because if ES complex is formed, that competitive inhibitor will not bind there. So, the Vmax will not alter in the presence of competitive inhibitor. So, the kinetics of competitive inhibitor inhibition shows that at any concentration of competitive inhibitor, the portion of enzyme, not all enzyme, a fraction or portion of enzyme exists in enzyme inhibitor complex form. And you know that if we have ES concentration, yeah, ES form, then they have KM similar to normal KM. But when we have EI complex, there is a no affinity for the substrate when EI is exist. Because either we can form ES complex, either we can form EI complex. So, if we will form ES complex that has affinity similar to its affinity in absence of inhibitor. But when we will form EI complex that does not have any affinity for the substrate. And you know that KM and affinity is inversely related to each other.
So if EI complex doesn't have any affinity for the substrate, that means they have highest KM. While ES complex have same affinity for the substrate, therefore they have the same KM. So out of all the enzyme, few enzyme have same affinity, few have higher affinity. So therefore overall affinity of enzyme and substrate is increasing. So in the presence of competitive inhibitor, the KM of enzyme increases. At the same time, in the presence of competitive inhibitor, the Vmax remain unchanged because Vmax is mainly dependent on the concentration of ES complex. As you know that if ES complex is formed, we will not have EI complex. If EI complex is formed, we will not have ES complex. So if ES complex is formed, it will form product because competitive inhibitor does not alter the formation of the product. Therefore, in the presence of a competitive inhibitor, Vmax remain unaltered. But if you want your reaction to achieve the Vmax, you require higher substrate concentration to achieve a particular fraction of the Vmax which is achieved at lower substrate concentration when we don't have any competitive inhibitors. Based on the assumption of competitive inhibition, we can derive the mechelis menten equation for competitive inhibitor. As you know that enzyme combined with the substrate and producing ES complex and ES complex forming the products. But in this case, in the presence of competitive inhibitor, competitive inhibitor combined with the enzyme and producing enzyme inhibitor complex that doesn't form any product. So if you derive mechelis menten equation for competitive inhibition, you will find that we have the equation of V0 is equal to V max into substrate concentration divided by Km 1 plus I upon Ki plus substrate concentration. Here V0 is initial velocity, V max is a maximum velocity, Km is a mechelis menten constant, I is inhibitor concentration and S is substrate concentration and Ki is dissociation constant of inhibitor with the enzyme. If you see this equation, you will find that it is quite similar to the mechelis menten equation that is given for normal enzyme. But the difference is they are having additional factor and that is 1 plus I upon Ki. So the factor 1 plus I upon Ki will be the factor that, that is responsible for altering the Km. So the modified Km which appears in the presence of inhibitor is known as apparent Km and that is equals to Km 1 plus I upon Ki where Km 1 plus I upon Ki considered to be inhibitor dependent statistical factor that describes distribution of enzyme between free enzyme and enzyme inhibitor forms. Sometime you will also see that this 1 plus I upon Ki is also represented by alpha. This is a in the figure you can see that this is the mechelis menten plot where in normal reaction you can see that the Km is different while in the presence of inhibitor, you can see that the Km is different. And if you see that the Km difference shows that the Km is increased in the presence of inhibitor. At the same time, if you see the Vmax, Vmax remains same. So it shows that competitive inhibitor altering Km without altering Vmax. And this is again a evidence for it. Similarly, Line weaver Brock equation for competitive inhibition can also be derived from mechelis menten equation. If you see it, then it is going to be 1 by V0 is equal to Km upon Vmax that is multiplied by the factor that is coming from competitive inhibition that is 1 plus I upon Ki into 1 upon S plus 1 by Vmax. 
if you put this equation as a straight line equation and you are making plot of it, then that plot that is known as line viewer plot is look like what you are seeing in the picture. You can see that a normal plot is there and a plot in presence of competitive inhibitor is there. So, if you observe it, you will see the two differences there. Axis, axis intercept is change. At the same time, you will also change in the slope, while intercept is not change, which is present on the y axis. So, y axis intercept is not changing, so Vmax is not changing. So, they are explaining each other because Vmax is not changed, so we will not have any change in the intercept at y axis. But x axis intercept change and it is decreasing towards the zero. It shows that if km is increasing, their 1 by km is moving towards zero. Please remember one thing that minus sign in minus 1 by km and minus 1 by km apparent only representing that you are putting these value before zero and on y axis. So, based on Michaelis Menten equations and line viewer equation for competitive inhibitor, we can also determine dissociation constant for the inhibitor. For that, the KM apparent, as you know that it is a KM change in the presence of competitive inhibitor, can be determined by seeing the value at 1 by s axis that is x axis of line viewer plot and reciprocal of that value is going to be the km apparent in the presence of competitive inhibitor and from normal curve we can calculate km for normal reaction where we don't have any inhibitor so so in simple way we can say that we are calculating 2 km one km that is normal km in absence of inhibitor, another km that is a km apparent in presence of inhibitor. So, once we will determine the km in absence and presence of inhibitor, then by using the equation km apparent is equal to km 1 plus i upon ki, we can determine the ki. How? Because we have the km apparent that is coming from km calculated for competitive inhibitor at the same time we have the km that is for normal reaction if you know the inhibitor concentration i then you can determine ki which is the dissociation constant of the inhibitor in similar way to the km for enzyme and substrate reaction ki is also the dissociation constant so if Ki is lower, it is representing the better interaction between enzyme and your competitive inhibitor. So, therefore, any molecules which is having lower Km is going to be more effective competitive inhibitor. As the inhibitor concentration increases, the slope of line viewer plot is shift towards axis 0. It shows that if you continuously increase in the concentration of competitive inhibitor, the Km is continuously increasing. After discussion with the kinetics and mechanism, now we will discuss about different examples which involves competitive inhibition. The first one is alcohol dehydrogenase. If you remember alcohol dehydrogenase, this is the one that converts ethanol into the staldehyde. And if you remember, ethanol and you also know that if methanol poisoning is there in the ethanol that will lead to the death of the individual who is taking methanol consume containing ethanol. So, if you see methanol and ethanol structure they are very similar to each other because ethanol having additional CS2 group. So, it is a CS3 CH2 OH while methanol is CS3 OH. So, structurally they are similar Therefore, if you have methanol, which is a competitively inhibiting alcohol dehydrogenase, hence in the place of ethanol, methanol is utilized 
therefore methanol can be a competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase but the interesting thing in this particular example is normally a competitive inhibitor is not converted into the product but methanol is also converted into the product by alcohol dehydrogenase and the product is formaldehyde if you remember formaldehyde and formic acid they are fixative therefore if you are if a person is taking ethanol that is having contamination of the methanol that methanol is converted into formaldehyde and that will fix your cell organelle that will fix your protein dna and that is the reason why a methanol poisoning leads to the death of person who is consuming methanol containing ethanol so you can see that how a competitive inhibitor is going to be lethal the another example of competitive inhibition is a malonate if you see malonate and if you see succinate if you remember succinate succinate is a intermediate that is formed in the tca cycle and it is converted into fumarate with the help of an enzyme that is known as succinate dehydrogenase so malonate is structurally similar to the succinate but the difference is malonate lack ch2 ch2 groups which is present in the succinate and if you remember the function of fad and succinate dehydrogenase then succinate dehydrogenase cannot convert any molecule into the product if it is not having ch2 ch2 group because the coenzyme of succinate dehydrogenase is fad therefore because of structural similarity between malonate and succinate malonate will bind to the succinate dehydrogenase but they are unable to convert it into the product because they are lacking ch2 ch2 group and therefore this malonate is going to be a important inhibitor of tca cycle if you remember the tm synthesis that is thymine synthesis in the nucleotide biosynthesis so thymine is synthesized thymine monophosphate is synthesized from uracil monophosphate and you see the difference between uracil and thymine it is only one methyl group and tetrahydrofolate which is well known methyl group carrier act as a coenzyme for the enzyme thymidylate synthase which is converting ump into the tmp and during the reaction that tetrahydrofolate is converted into dihydrofolate and the reaction result into the production of tmp that is involved in the other dna synthesis but dihydrofolate which is produced here must be converted into tetrahydrofolate when you want this thymidylate synthase to be function again and that is achieved by an enzyme known as dihydrofolate reductase so dihydrofolate reductase basically converting dihydrofolate into tetrahydrofolate and continuing the function of thymidylate synthase and methotrexate and aminopterin are homolog of the folic acid if you remember tetrahydrofolate is a coenzymic form of folic acid so structurally methotrexate and aminopterin are homolog to the tetrahydrofolate so as well as they are also homolog to the dihydrofolate that is produced in this reaction so if you have methotrexate and aminopterin they will block the dihydrofolate reductase because of its homology to the folic acid or dihydrofolate or tetrahydrofolate hence they are inhibiting the tmp biosynthesis there this is the reason why methotrexate can be used as an anti cancer drug because it can inhibit dihydrofolate reductase as well as thymidylate synthase by competitive mechanism and aminopterin is well known component of h media that is used for production of monoclonal antibodies the another inhibitor which act by competitive inhibitor mechanism is statin drugs so cholesterol biosynthesis is important and it takes place from acetyl coenzyme and during the synthesis 
एसिटाइल इज कन्वर्टेड इंटू एच एम जी को एंजाई में एच एम जी को एंजाई में इज कन्वर्टेड इंटू मेवोलोनेट विच इज कन्वर्ट इंटू डिफरेंट इंटरमीडिएट ऑफ कोलेस्ट्रॉल बायोसेंथिस एंड फाइनली कोलेस्ट्रॉल इज सेंथिसाइज एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस रिएक्शन कन्वर्जन ऑफ एच एम जी को एंजाई में टू द मेवोलोनेट इज कैटेलाइज बाई एच एम जी को एंजाई में रिडक्टेज एंड मेवोलोनेट सेंथसिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट for the cholesterol biosynthesis and a statin group of drugs are homolog of hmg coenzyme a they are structurally similar to each other therefore they act as a competitive inhibitor for hmg coenzyme reductase this statin group of drug is used as a anti cholesterol drug and it is very common drug that is prescribed if a person is having diabetes after discussing four examples of competitive inhibition it is now the fifth one and that is a sulfur drug sulfur drug such as sulfonylamide it can inhibit the biosynthesis of the folic acid by inhibiting enzyme dihydrotyrate synthase this enzyme converts in paba that is a precursor of this synthesis into diphosphate and dihydrotyrate sulfonylamide this is an example of sulfur drug is a structural homolog of paba which is a substrate of this enzyme and therefore act as a competitive inhibitor of this enzyme based on the mechanism of action of the sulfur drug they are biostatic therefore they will inhibit the multiplication of bacteria and finally in absence of folic acid which is a very important vitamin when you are talking about the metabolism in absence of the folic acid the bacteria will die but the interesting point about this inhibition is this sulfur drug may inhibit the human folic acid biosynthesis it happens so we will have an alternate of taking this folic acid and that is through diet therefore whenever you are taking sulfur drug it is better to take the diet which is containing the folic acid or doctor recommends you to take the multivitamins that have the folic acid so in this way we have discussed about the different examples starting from the malonate to methanol to statin to sulfur drug they all are very important and they all are designed against a particular substrate therefore they are competitive inhibitors and not only that it is a competitive inhibitor based drug that is the highest in number if you search all the drug that is available in the market let's have discuss what is the significance of competitive inhibition in drug designing when we have competitive inhibitor and it have lower ki that means it have better interaction so once your competitive inhibitor have better interaction with the enzyme then more competitive inhibition take place but when substrate have better interaction or lower km then no inhibition takes place or less inhibition takes place why it happen because both are competing with each other so competitive inhibitors are designed against the enzyme using homology of substrate or any other intermediate that forms during conversion of substrate into the product so when we can design a competitive inhibitor then it will block the reaction that is catalyzed by the enzyme so we will have some examples that are following that competitive inhibition 
mechanism. For example, statin drugs, which is used as an anti cholesterol drug, then methotrexate, which is used as an anti cancer drug. Competitive inhibitor can be designed which mimic transition state or intermediate state of enzymatic reaction. So, when we are saying mimicking, that means we are basically making homologue of it. And transition state is so important for enzymatic reaction, and it is also known that it is going to have highest binding affinity. So, if you are designing any inhibitor against a transition state, then it is going to be very effective. Therefore, these days the transition state inhibitors are more prominently designed as compared to substrate mimicking inhibitors. So, transition state because of its higher binding affinity with the enzyme, they have low Ki. Another word you can say that they have lower Ki, therefore they have better binding affinity than the substrate. Therefore, the drug designing when we are talking about in silico drug designing, when you are talking about in vitro drug designing, they all are very important when you are designing drug based on the transition state analog. So, in this way, the future of drug discovery is as well as the past of drug discovery is roaming around the competitive inhibitor mechanism and we are playing with the different different modifications that will mimic transition state and different intermediates that is present during any enzymatic reaction. So, students, let us summarize what we have discussed in this module. In this module, we have discussed mechanism of competitive inhibition, what is kinetics of enzyme inhibition. We have elaborately discussed of examples that follow competitive inhibition. We have also discussed how a line weaver block plot or mechanism maintenance plot can be drawn for competitive inhibition. We have also discussed how we can calculate the dissociation constant by using line weaver plot. We have also discussed in involvement of different interactions between enzyme and inhibitor that play significant role in enzyme inhibition. We have also discussed how a competitive inhibitor increases KM of enzyme, how a competitive in inhibitor does not have any alteration in the Vmax of the enzyme. We have also discussed why apparent increase in the KM in presence of competitive inhibitor result from the full affinity of ES complex and no affinity of EI complex. We have also discussed about the significance of dissociation constant and its role in the drug designing which based on the hom homology to substrate or homology to transition state. Most of the drug that is designed against any enzyme, they mainly belongs to competitive inhibitor mechanism. Either they are competitive inhibitor of substrate or they are competitive inhibitor of the transition state. So, therefore, the study of competitive inhibition its mechanism, its kinetics are very significant in terms of drug designing and inhibiting a particular metabolic pathway. Thank you.